There's a currently no adopted standard for sending AV signals, video, audio, control and power over a network. There are multiple ways of doing it and none of the options are interoperable. Would you agree? Uh, well, Is that I, too I, harsh? Uh, it's, it might be too harsh. I would disagree. I mean, I, we know that this transition to IP for AV, audiovisual installations, uh, largely now uh, uh, use Ethernet switches. So first thing, by nature, Ethernet is interoperable. Now, to follow your, your point, that's right. You have many proprietary solutions out there. And uh, if you look at uh, video, because that's the new thing right now, for the past three to five years, video is transitioning away from HDBSD to IP, and you literally have maybe a thousand different proprietary solutions. But still, there's one technology that is shared amongst more than 50 vendors today, and this one is called SDVOE. So I wouldn't argue too much. Uh, I would just say that while most of the video over IP technologies are still proprietary because they are based on one codec of some sort with JPEG 2000 or MPEG, they still are largely custom and proprietary. You can find a large interoperability amongst a lot of vendors like the Christie, ZV, Sony, and other SDVOE founding members and, and a lot of contributors for a common platform. Now, if I look beyond video, you're right. I mean, uh, historically, audio transitioned 10 years ago, if not 12 years ago already. Uh, AVB was kind of a standard, but still proprietary with AVB uh, participants. Now you, you, you have AES67 coming from broadcast and Dante. But it is, it is going in the right direction, okay? Because these standards between uh, AES67 and their variants like Dante and QSIS from QSC, they converge, right? So I think in the audio you have two worlds, AVB versus AES67 and variants. And in the video, this is the wild, wild west. I agree. But uh, I may think that in the future, one of these technologies will be prevalent and maybe win, and maybe this would be the SDVOE technology. We'll see. How long will that take, do you think? Um, well, um, maybe um, um, we look at maybe three to five years maximum. The market will decide, but yes. um, something maybe your readers and uh, uh, listeners should know. Um, SDVOE is one technology that relies on a hardware component that used to be called an FPGA, like you have millions of them out there. But the father of that FPGA technology is called Semtech Aptovision, founding member of the SDVOE with all of us. And those Semtech Aptovision engineers just released for the first time ever in the world, a integrated ASIC with that SDVOE FPGA technology in a very small piece of ASIC. And that could be the, what could make this needle move, right? Because for the first time you have an integrated small piece of hardware that could be spread amongst millions of displays or projectors or sources, you know? So this might be a reason, but again, the market will decide. And um, in the global AV market today, you have other great AV over IP technology that use other codecs. And uh, on this show at ISC 2020, many of them look impressive and good, you know? So, but I think that the market will somehow make a decision. And because it happened with audio, you know? Yes, the reason I'm asking the question is now we're moving so much more towards a networking environment of, of whatever kind we operate. The IT industry is so used to straightforward interoperability that, you know, how can we not have that if we expect all these products and technologies to run in a networked environment which we all want them to run in? That's right. That's right. And uh, so by how nature, do you plan? That's the key thing. I mean, that... Yeah, by nature, Ethernet is interoperable because you have a nitropoly organization and you have a bunch, 
the uh, regulatory agencies, you know, making sure that everything can interrupt. Now, uh, in the AV world, I'm not sure we can uh, make a parallel. I'm, I'm not sure because um, I'm, go I'm going to give you uh, one example that as a product person, I understood because I come from IT, you know, I'm 25 years in the IT and for a few years now deeply involved in the AV. I was said that a AV system integrator actually does work with potentially hundreds and hundreds of different suppliers. And it's normal. If you compare that with the IT world, a IT system integrator can be a, a mid-size, small or larger. I mean, come on, right? Uh, when you work with Microsoft and, and maybe a, a few other uh, l big global brands, you're done, right? So the AV world is still very specific. It's, it's, it's a world of uh, different technologies. So at least we know that Ethernet will be a foundation because Ethernet always wins. If you look at telephony and in the old days and the video surveillance now, tomorrow, uh, most likely Ethernet will carry AV. But because you have so many applications, so many different types of applications, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you still see next couple of years a lot of different uh, variations. Yeah. But again, the Ethernet platform should be uh, 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 interoperable enough, you know, already. It's still when you're planning ahead, when your environments, and we, we think of environments now, not products, so if, we, if we're looking at AV, um, can be truly planned ahead and thought of strategically if the, the underlying technology you're trying to put in is still in transition, if you like. I mean, it's, it's where do you start and what, what basis do you put in there? If you've got an IP network, it's probably very straightforward. But I don't know. You know, a lot of people have old analog stuff and they have Ethernet networks all over the place. And I suppose they're, they're putting a toe into all this. And it, you could argue that Microsoft is the biggest proprietary standard. And yes, it's great having a number of manufacturers all, and then making the ASIC. Is that the way forward, do you think? I mean, we're on our, on our you know, session on Friday, we're going to have everybody from STBOE and HGBST and everybody else on there, all, arg all, all arguing their case. And I'm just wondering whether it sort of muddies the waters yeah. and doesn't explain clearly what AV, AV planners and strategists are trying to put in and whether the I mean, AV industry is probably a bit of frightened of AV over IP anyway. Yeah, no, that, that's a very good point. And uh, I, I can bring maybe a modest contribution to that, OK? Because um, you have a, v a large number of wrong assessments and uh, ideas, uh, wrong statements anyway, for, for a long time already. Uh, having a Ethernet network does not mean this Ethernet network is anyway ready for uh, all kinds of AV over IP technologies, and it's very true for video over IP. Video over IP is so demanding in terms of overall bandwidth that none of the IT networks in production today, anyway, are ready for it. It's a very simple reason. Uh, uh, by the books, IT network engineers are used to build networks with 20 to 1 oversubscription. It means that you and me, we are at the access of the network, we sleep most of the time. So the, the networks are not line weight, they are blocking because uh, voice over IP can be prioritized enough, but you know, some emails and data can wait and they are queued. None of it is relevant for video over IP and AV in general. Video cannot wait, video cannot be prioritized or queued up. Video, it's a, it's a, it's a multicast, uh, best effort, uh, real-time delivery, right? So saying that, I just mean that even if uh, there was a belief before that Ethernet was up there ready and it's free and, uh, and uh, AV should transition right away, I don't believe in the convergence. I, I just don't believe in the convergence. It cannot happen. AV over IP and especially the great multiple video over IP technologies 
uh, including SDVOE, but also including many other great uh, 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 one gig video of IP technologies, require a brand new architecture to work. So I would rather consider that as uh, building new islands in an ocean, right? So you have a production IT network, you do need to build AV specific line rate Ethernet networks. So for that reason, I wouldn't be too pessimistic, but I wouldn't say that, you know, AV will uh, go away and, and IT will take the power. It's, it, it can't happen. Um, there was a, uh, a big uh, debate a uh, couple of years ago when uh, people were saying, remember when the voice over IP transitioned to IP, telephonists went away and IT uh, took the power, right? I think that for the AV, that's just the opposite. Uh, AV system integrators, admins, AV teams, AV customers uh, are AV professionals and they will, they will have to learn and leverage Ethernet. But IT teams know absolutely nothing about AV. And the uh, IT team might want to support them but I think that there's no war. It's just a matter of how AV teams and IT teams want to collaborate. And IT teams should still own the IT infrastructure, monitor them, have an inventory, upgrading, uh, uh, having all the switches into their management platform, that's for sure. But AV professionals should run them. And IT teams should just, you know, out of band and monitor them. So, I, 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 I think it, my, my point was clear enough. I'm, I'm just saying that the convergence might not be possible ever because none of the IT networks are ready for it anyway.